And good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Wayne County Sports here on Outlook TV. I am Dan Harris alongside my partner, cameraman Jeff Vaughn, bringing you all the action here live from the Mule Barn in Fairfield, Illinois, at Fairfield Community High School. Jeff should have another exciting game here tonight between Fairfield and El Dorado. Hope so. A rematch of a game earlier on in the season. Fairfield won that. But uh, I'll tell you what, looking at this Eagles roster, they just have size everywhere. Not a player on there listed under six feet tall. They are one of the taller teams in Southern Illinois, but that doesn't always equate success. Nope. They are 6-13 and 13 on the year, 2-4 and four in the Black Diamond. Uh, they uh, they have a lot of height, but they're you know only two seniors on the squad. Very young, inexperienced. It seems like the uh, Mules have gone up against quite a few teams like that this year, and they the Mules have experienced themselves. Their two main scorers, uh, Lackey and Gifford, they're both seniors. They've played together for a long time, and they've all I mean they've got a few seniors that aren't prominent scorers as well. It seems like Connor Scott he's he doesn't get a lot of minutes, but whenever he comes in, he gives good effort, especially on the defensive end. Yeah, I got to agree with you there, Jeff. But uh, this uh, El Dorado Eagles team, you know, only has two seniors, but they're not bad. Richard Graceffa and uh, Nathan Burnett are their two leading scorers. Graceffa actually got injured the last time Fairfield played at El Dorado, hurt his ankle, was in a boot for a while. I think this is his second game back, and he's a outside threat. And they don't have too much of that outside of Burnett, uh, Graceffa, and Isaac Bethel, I believe, who will also get the start for El Dorado, and that could doom them with that Mules 2-3 zone they like to play. And we've seen that with the with the Lady Mules recently when we've covered them. They've given up some outside shooting. And you mentioned it, the, the Mules like to run that 2-3 zone. They've really uh, really run it well here in recent weeks, starting with uh, the Carmine Tournament. It seemed to me like they've just run it really well, gotten some turnovers off it. But if teams are shooting well from the outside, then, I mean, it's just it's anybody's game at that point. Yeah, it is. And the Mules' perimeter defense has been – Something to be desired at yeah. points this season. Uh, not against El Dorado that first matchup, which was a 59-51 win at El Dorado early on in the season. Uh, it was the second win for the Mules, who are now 15-7. And, seven. and uh, you know, they weren't playing their best ball, but, you know, they got that uh, first conference win of the season, and that kind of kick-started the rest of the way. Uh, since that game, they have gone 13-3. and three. That's not too bad. Not no, a bad stretch that. at all. I'll take that. So El Dorado Eagles here. In their purple uniforms, we'll try to bring it to the Mules tonight. We will be right back after this, after a word from our sponsors. Farmers have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and ag in the classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator. When you deliver your grain, ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. Over 200,000 people across the South Central Illinois region were positively impacted by the We Choose Health grant. With increased access to healthy food, physical activity, and smoke-free environments, the Clay and Wayne County Health Departments are proud to be beneficiaries of this grant opportunity. As your local health departments, we are here to serve our communities and provide valuable public health information. Wayne County Health Department, www.wchdil.com. Clay County Health Department, www.healthdept.org. When it's time to replace the old car or truck sitting in the drive, Give Le Mans Chevrolet Chrysler in downtown Fairfield a chance at your business. We can save you money. No high-pressure tactics, no fast talking, just good old-fashioned respect for the customer's needs and wants in a comfortable atmosphere. Look us up at LeMansOnline.com. Then contact us at Le Mans Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. You'll like the way we do business. And welcome back, folks, here at the Mule Barn here on Outlook TV. Dan Harris, Jeff Vaughn bringing you the action between Fairfield and El Dorado Black Diamond Conference action. Fairfield is 6-0 and in the Black Diamond, I do believe. And El Dorado is 2-4. So Fairfield looks to stay undefeated in the conference. And I think if they get this win, I think they're guaranteed to share the Black Diamond Conference East title. And you always like to have that, you know, kind of off your mind where you're guaranteed the top spot. You don't have to play for that anymore. You're not going to stop playing hard, obviously. But it's just one less thing to worry about, you know. And if the Mules do that, 
This will be the uh, fifth straight Black Diamond Conference East Championship, something the Mules have never done. I don't think that's ever been done in the Black Diamond. Really? Yeah. Well, how about that? It, uh, it, it would be just a, a phenomenal achievement for Coach McRavey and his squad. Should mention the JV game. Uh, Mules pulled out on top there, 54-52. to Hard-fought game. Uh, that was a game down in El Dorado, which you weren't at, Jeff. Nope. Uh, the uh, JV Mules got down by about 17 early on and came back to get within one but fell down there. They, they shot terribly down there. And this yep. game, a little bit better. The JV Mules are improving. That's what you'd like to see, too. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, watching that game, the play of Jaden Lewis inside really, I mean, it really impressed me. Not so much on the offensive end. I think he finished with three or four points total. But he had five or six emphatic blocks down there, and he was also mm -hmm. just – he was denying entry passes as well. He was playing his heart out. Probably the hardest I've seen oh, him yeah. play all season effort-wise. And maybe at this point in the season he's got some good conditioning in him mm -hmm. and he's finally able to give that effort all the time. But, yeah, this El Dorado team, you know, they're big at the JV level too. They started 6 6, six four at the JV level. Uh, and, and, you know, Jaden has that size that, you know, Fairfoot's going to need in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. It's not too early, I don't think, to start talking about the next couple of years for Fairfoot basketball. No, season's starting to wind down and – when it does, you're going to lose Lackey, and he's your primary height on this mm -hmm. squad. You're also going to lose Gifford as well, your outside scoring threat, but you've got Sky Kolak yeah, ready got, to step oh, in for him next year. You've got a bunch of guards yeah. you know, coming back, but you know, inside play and height will be an issue for the Mules. So I'll tell you what, we'll take another quick break, and we'll be right back with key players of the game. Farmers have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and ag in the classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator. When you deliver your grain, ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. Over 200,000 people across the South Central Illinois region were positively impacted by the We Choose Health grant. With increased access to healthy food, physical activity, and smoke-free environments, the Clay and Wayne County Health Departments are proud to be beneficiaries of this grant opportunity. As your local health departments, we are here to serve our communities and provide valuable public health information. Wayne County Health Department, www.wchdil.com. Clay County Health Department, www.healthdept.org. When it's time to replace the old car or truck sitting in the drive, give Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in downtown Fairfield a chance at your business. We can save you money. No high-pressure tactics, no fast talking, just good old-fashioned respect for the customer's needs and wants in a comfortable atmosphere. Look us up at LamontsOnline.com. Then contact us at Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. You'll like the way we do business. And welcome back to the Mule Barn. Jeff Vaughn alongside Dan Harris on Outlook TV. We're four and a half minutes away from National Anthem and the starting lineup, so it's about time for us to get to our key players of the game, sponsored by Pollard Realty. If you're looking for a home, commercial site, or land, call Linda Tucker or Julie Shreve at Pollard Realty at 618-599-7765. And we'll start off with El Dorado. And I haven't seen them play, but uh, do have the scores from the last time they played. And one of their leading scores was Richard Graceffa. I believe he had 11 points, and you said he got injured uh, in that game. Yeah, so he did. I'm going to give it to him. He's an outside threat, you mentioned, and that's something that has hurt the Mules in games this season. So I'll give it to Graceffa for El Dorado. And for Fairfield, mix it up a little bit. Give it to Wyatt Troyer, starting now in place of uh, Brant McGill for I don't know, a couple weeks now since since yeah, Carmi, since actually. Since Carmi. And yeah. he plays really hard on defense, plays bigger than he is. He's only 5'8". But also, he doesn't score many points, but whenever he does get some buckets, it's generally in a big big spot in the game. So I'm going to give it to Wyatt Troyer. Wyatt Troyer, again, the new starter for Fairfield. Uh, only stands at 5'8", usually the smallest guy on the court, yeah. but if you had to measure effort, his, he would probably be the biggest. Mm -hmm. And he gets a surprising number of rebounds. You mentioned it. He's just scrappy out there. And he has a pretty solid basketball like he knows where he needs to go to get a board, knows where he needs to be on defense. And he's pretty he's pretty dangerous in the corner for three as well. Yeah. 
And, you know, statistically, Jeff, I don't like to get into too much of the new age basketball statistics. The corner three, uh, well, at least NBA standards, I think it's different in high school since the uh, arc is the same length mm -hmm. all the way around, is the most effective shot at the uh, during the game. Most effective yep. shot, most worth the most points, you know. But I think that's different at the high school level. And that's the school song. I think that's the first time we've heard that this year with a band. Is it written? No. Yeah, you're, well, the first time I've heard it, at least. I don't know about you. I don't know. I'm not I sure they have the, the all the bands together here tonight, high school, grade schools, bands here performing at the high school. Kind of a large crowd here. Just yeah. Great student section down below us. Uh, the bleachers all to the right of us are filled. Um, good showing on El Dorado's side Good showing on well. El Dorado's side. See a little bit of purple over there. Mm -hmm. So pretty good showing. Got to give props to the uh, Mule fans tonight here. As uh, I'm really hoping Fairfield can come out here and really just set the tone early like they did at Wayne City. Oh, man. At Wayne City, they came out and they just blitzed the Indians. What was it? Up, They were up 30-5 to five at one point in that game. And it's tough for any team to come back from that. So, yeah, you'd like to see that against El Dorado. They played them pretty close last time, an uh, eight-point victory. Yeah. But uh, so I don't know. They have... Graceffa's back. They have Sam Coker, who I don't know if he was injured before. Was He doesn't play a whole lot. He doesn't lot. play? Okay. No, he doesn't play a whole lot. Got um, a lot of size, though. They do have a lot of size. So they have, like, I, don't, I think it was, what, one, two, three, four players at 6'4 and taller. They're going to start uh, three of them. Uh, Clay Bolds, we're going to get to the starting lineups in just a little bit. As the uh, band's winding down here, we're winding down here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce you to the uh, Fairfield Mules varsity basketball team, and we'll uh, join the national anthem in progress. I'm Jaden Lewis. I'm a 6'3 freshman. I'm Brent McGill. I'm a 5'10 sophomore. I'm Wyatt Bohr, and I'm a 5'10 sophomore. I'm Caleb Smothers, and I'm a 5'7 sophomore. I'm Macklin Snyder, and I'm a 5'10 sophomore. I'm Devin Butler. I'm a 5'8 sophomore. I'm Wyatt Chor, and I'm a 5'8 junior. Brendan Mitchell, 6'2 junior. My name is Colton Land, and I'm a 6'1 junior. I'm Sky Kolak, and I'm a 6'1 junior. My name is Connor Scott, and I'm a 6'0 senior. Dakota Young, 6'3 senior. Andrew Gifford, 5'11 senior. I'm Nathaniel Lackey, and I'm a 6'8 senior. Coach Snyder, it's my 11th year as freshman coach of the Mules. My name's Adam Book. This is my 10th year as the JV coach for the Fairfield Mules. Coach Scott McRamey, this is my 10th year as the varsity head coach of the Mules. Students of Fairfield Community High School, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's boys basketball game between the El Dorado Eagles and your Fairfield Mules. Welcome back, everybody, here on Outlook TV. Dan Harris, Jeff on bringing the action. Let's get to the starting lineups here. First, for the El Dorado Eagles, Jeff, do you want to go ahead and give those? Absolutely. They will start a 6'1 sophomore, number three, Isaac Bethel. A 6'2 senior, number four, Richard Graceffi. Graceffa. Graceffa, pardon Graceffa. me, my bad. 6'7 yeah. uh, junior, Clay Bolds. 6'4 uh, senior, Nathan Burnett. 
Bowles is number 12. Burnett's number 13, by the way. And a 6'3 junior, Adam Partridge, he wears number 15. A lot of size there. A lot of size. 6'7 junior. They are coached by Mr. Josh Bradley. Have a record of 6 and 13 on the year 2 and 4 in the Black Diamond Conference. You'll see the Eagle cheerleaders finishing up their routine here and get ready for the uh, Fairfield Mules starting lineup. They only have a, they actually have a bunch of home games coming up. Uh, not just tonight. They'll play Hampton County at home, Vianna at home, and Flora at home. And then the last game of the year is going to be at Carmi. They actually play tomorrow at the Benton Shootout against a tough opponent in Casey Westfield out of the Little Illini Conference. So that should be a good game down at Casey tomorrow at 3 o'clock. We'll be on the air a little bit before 3. Uh, Jeff, why don't you go ahead and give the Fairfield Mules starting lineup. All right. They'll be starting 5'8", Jr., wearing number one, Wyatt Troyer. 6'1", Jr., number 10, Colton Land, had his first career dunk at Wayne City on Tuesday. I sure did. Hope we have more of that tonight. 5'11", Sr., number 14, Andrew Gifford. A 6'1", Jr., number 32, Sky Kolak. And big man in the middle, 6'8", Sr., number 55, Nathaniel Lackey. Mules are coached, of course, by Scott McElravey. They are 15-7 and seven on the year, and I believe you said 6-0 and oh in the six conference. And oh. So hoping to keep that going tonight. Yeah, look to go 10-0 and oh in the conference this year. This would uh, be a long way towards that because uh, they have, uh, yeah, this is uh, one, two, three, four more conference games left. And they only have one conference game on the road left. So you think the Mules, if they can stay undefeated at home this year, which actually they've lost one game at home this year. That was against Harrisburg uh, mm -hmm. early on. But if they can uh, just keep that one loss at home, that's a successful year here at the Mule Barn. Absolutely. I like to have a, a good showing in front of your home crowd, especially whenever it's something like this. We mentioned it earlier. My goodness, there are a lot of people here. Yeah. And it's a great atmosphere, quite frankly. Do you want to mention something before we get started, Jeff? Uh, the passing of Robert Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, he was a great FCHS athlete. Always loved supporting uh, everything here at Fairfield Community High School. And, uh, you know, it's a big loss for the community. Thank and our hearts go out to the Vaughn family. Nice moment of silence here before the national anthem. That uh, very classy move by FCHS. You expect nothing less. Fairfield's going to be in their white uniforms with uh, red numbers. And El Dorado will be in their purple uniforms with their white numbers or gold numbers. Some gold trim on there. Some interesting color palettes <laughs> here tonight. Lackey and Burnett will be doing the tip. Uh, we have uh, our refs are Bill McLean, Scott Appleby, and St. Ledger tonight. Tip is won easily by Nathaniel. And here we go. El Dorado is going to be in a zone. That's a 2-3 zone. Over to Kolak. Top the key to Gifford. In the corner to land. Now to get it to Kolak, top of the key. This is a 2-3 zone look that El Dorado likes to do. Now to Lackey in the corner. He's guarded by Partridge all the way across to Kolak. He ball fakes a three. Kicks it to Land in the corner. Back all the way across to Gifford. Five feet behind the line. Tries to skip it down to Colton underneath. He's doing a backside seal and uh, tipped out of bounds. So 30 seconds gone. Tied up at nothing. The inbound to Lackey in the paint. He's going to put up a hook shot. It's going to not go in, but he was fouled. You see that a few times? few times about every game that I've uh, that I've called actually which is different from last year they look to get it to Lackey early and he goes aggressively to the basket whether or not he makes it uh, he generally gets fouled and you like to see that get him going early I think you want to get Nathaniel going early uh, sometimes uh, tends to defer in the first quarter um, but he has in the last several games so last first quarter I believe he had 10 points up at Wayne City he's got the first two this one as he makes both free throws something he's really improved and worked on in the offseason El Dorado back in a hurry. They almost lose it. Bethel gets it in the corner to Burnett. He's going to drive, put up a floater. No good. Rebound goes to Wyatt Troy. Back quickly come the Mules. It's Gifford now. Top of the key. Thought about shooting. Now gives it to Troyer. He'll fire three. And it rolls <laughs> in. Three-pointer for Wyatt Troyer. Tickles the twine from behind the line. Does the junior. Five to nothing. Minute gone here. Now the Mules are going to press a little bit. Graceffa having a hard time in the backcourt. Gets it to Burnett. I think he and walked. he walked. Yep. First turnover for the Eagles. That's that good start we wanted, Jeff. Absolutely it is. And Wyatt Troyer, we said his name in the pregame for the key player, got a rebound down there and then a quick three-pointer that uh, wasn't necessarily the prettiest finish, but it went in, and that's all that really matters. Will be Mule Ball. Watch the lob here, Jeff. Mm-hmm. 
Here it comes. Oop. Oop, not there. Well they defended it well. And the Mules will turn it right back over. Scott Cole, I couldn't handle the pass. That was going to be the lob, but El Dorado saw it coming. Deck down quickly are the Eagles. Burnett top the key. They get it to Bulbs outside. Now a long three is up and airballed by Graceffa. Rebound goes to Kolak. Back quickly come the Mules. Now to Sky. He'll fire a three. In and out, no good. It's going to be tipped out of bounds. Go to El Dorado. He still hasn't found his shot consistently, has Sky Kolak. He's been a little bit dry, but still like to see the like to see the shot. It was a good shot. Yeah, it was. I, I think it was an outstanding shot. And it looks like the Eagles yep. are gonna just turn it over again. So two turnovers early for El Dorado. Five to nothing is the score. Almost two minutes underway here in the first quarter. Troyer with the ball gets to Gifford now. And Gifford will fire a three, Ooh. and he hits it, and he's fouled. Some quick three-point shooting here early on for the Mules. So Gifford has a chance at the early four-point play. Might see a timeout if he makes this free throw. And he does. Coach Josh Bradley elects not to call a timeout. See if his team can weather the storm. This team lost to Harrisburg last Tuesday, 60 to 46, and they're going to have another turnover. And nope, nope, the Mules are going to lose it out of bounds. Thought Wyatt Troy might have had himself another steal. I, I'm surprised they didn't call a travel there on Troyer as he kind of fell he, down on the ground. And I don't rolled, think but he had possession all okay. the way. They Ooh. inbound it to Burnett, and he almost loses it off his foot. Ooh. And now he has to pick it up to Graceffa. Gets it in the corner to Partridge. And they're going to call a block on Lackey. I kind of disagree with that. But yeah, not a big fan of that call. Who was it? Graceffi, the Graceffa. Gracious, I don't need to do that. But it wasn't. It was Partridge. He initiated the contact, and Lackey was straight up. But I'm not a ref for a reason. Yep, Adam Partridge will go to the free throw line. And that one's not going to fall. Yeah, El Dorado hadn't been close on any of their attempts no. so far. They're still scoreless 9 nothing lead. Shades of Wayne City. Next shot. That one rattles home. So El Dorado gets on the board. It's 9-1 to one early on. Back comes Gifford. Gets a screen from Troy, but nothing happening. El Dorado sticking with this 2-3 zone in the corner to Lackey. It's going to go baseline. Just lay it up and in. Nice Good move take. there by the big man. Good move. 11-1. to 5.25 to go now in the, ball in the first quarter. That would be a quick ball game. Yeah. Now Burnett top of the key. He's just going to try to go inside, yeah. but he lowers the shoulder. Excellent defense there by Troyer. Shuffling his feet, stayed in front of him. Just frustrating. The Burnett will come out. They bring in number 21, Max Kayser. And it's 11 to 1. Mills playing good ball here early on. Long game, though. Gifford's going to try to get in the middle. Kicks it over to Kolak. He thought about shooting the three. That gets the land in the corner. Skip pass to Gifford. He'll fire another three. That one's Man. money. And we're going to get. There's a foul there off the ball. I didn't see who the foul was on. I didn't either. Three is good. One. I think they got a foul on Colton Land. Mm. He stayed out of foul trouble at Wayne City, but early foul there. And we're going to have a timeout. First timeout, going to be a 30. We'll keep it right here, talk about some of our great sponsors here on Outlook TV. Like Pollard Realty, if you're looking for a home, commercial site, or land, call Linda Tucker or Julie Shreve at Pollard Realty, 618-599-7765. And for experience and professional tax preparation service, see McDowell, Kinsel, and Jessup at 117 Northeast 3rd Street in Fairfield. Call 618-842-2183. And Prairie Acres Farms and Trucking sells rock, lime, and riprap, hauls rock, and offers custom hauling as well as driveway and roadway spreading. Call 618-838-6912 or 618-673-2191. Yeah, there's uh, just a little bit under five minutes to go here in the first quarter, and the Mules are up 14-1, to one, Jeff. Yeah, they're hitting, and sh they're shooting quick outside shots, good outside shots, and they're hitting them. Gifford's hit, had a couple of threes. Uh, Troyer hit one early. Yep. And everything's clicking for them right now. And the Mules are they are at their best when they work inside and out. Mm -hmm. Now they're putting a little pressure on. Kays regarded by Kolak. Now it's the Graceffa. Gets it up to Partridge. He's trying to bully his way down to the paint. And he about loses it. Finally kicks it out to Graceffa. Now to Bethel. 
Now to Kayser. And the Mules are going to take that one away. Another turnover. Back comes Gifford. He's going to lay it up, spin it in. Andrew Gifford having a heck of a first quarter. He's got nine early points, 16-1. to one. Mules just tenacious on defense. <laughs> Land didn't Land tip that. It's a pity that he couldn't cup it because he would have had a run out and a chance for his second dunk. Yeah. But he can't have everything. They can't be dunking every game now, and Jeff. And I'll take a 16-1 to one lead. I'll take a 16-1 to one lead every time. In the corner to Graceffa, now to Partridge. There are two Partridges. They have a 6-4 sophomore. Now Bulls in the paint. Tries to do a shot over Lackey. No good. Land fights for a rebound. Now it goes in the hands of Gifford. Up quickly is Gifford. He was going to pull up, but he passes it to his teammate, uh, Kolak. Lackey gets the rebound, puts it up and in. Kolak shot no good. Lackey said thank you for that ball. That just landed in his hands. 18-1. to one. Mules putting it on El Dorado early. Graceffa thought about the three. Uh, and we're going to get a kick ball. They're really letting that go. All right. Oh, I thought Same I result, but he did kick it. Coming into the game now is number two, I believe. Yep. Adam Ninnis, a six-foot junior. He's going to replace Graceffa. Again, that's just his second game back from an injury. They inbound it to Ninnis. Running the point is Bethel. Back to Ninnis. Down to Ethan Partridge in the corner. Anchor going to get a – nope, he just nope. dribbled it out of bounds. All right. Fifth turnover for El Dorado. 18-1 to one is our score. 325 to go here in the first. I didn't expect this. No, everything is clicking for the Mules from defense. They're playing tenacious D defense. Tenacious I, defense. I like what Pardon me, copyright infringement. And why Troyer's second three is no good, but Kolak's going to get the rebound. Get it to Lackey, and oh. Lackey's going to turn it over. He thought Troyer was going to zig when Troyer zagged. And again, I like what you did there as well, yeah. by the way. But uh, not that many turnovers. And can't say this has been a sloppy start for the Mules because about everything's working. In the lane, shot is up and no good. Rebound going to be corralled by Kolak. That was Bethel. And El Dorado can't get anything to fall. Well, so far, the Mules have gotten everything to work. In the corner to land, skip past to Gifford. Try to get him open for another three. Now to Kolak. Back to Andrew. Andrew has a season high of six threes in the game this year. He's going to fire another one from three feet behind the line, and he's going to hit the three and get fouled again. And foul. What a quarter for Andrew Gifford. Trying to get up to 1,000 points in this game alone. Going to have a couple of subs come in for Fairfield. Kolak and Troyer will sit down, and Brant McGill and Macklin Snyder will check in. They're also going to bring back in Graceffa for Bethel. Gifford, two four-point plays opportunities here in the first quarter. And he has 12 points mm. by himself. Yeah. Uh, that one won't go. About the only shot he's missed, yeah. isn't it? Uh, Laredo up quickly. He's 21-1. And El Dorado's going to throw it away. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> El Dorado threw it me. away again. And just nothing going on. Yep. Stay tuned to halftime. I uh, know we're a long way from that, but we'll have scores. I'm already getting scores up on the Twitter machine. And I always update uh, with scoring and stuff from the Mules as well. Snyder now. He's going to come back up top, gets it over to McGill. He comes back up out to Gifford. Kind of looking for Lackey in the post. Gifford he stepped, out of, stepped bounds. out of bounds. Yep. Kind of got bumped a little bit, got turned sideways, and commits the turnover. About the only thing he's done wrong here in the first quarter. 12 points for Andrew Gifford. El Dorado only has one. Two minutes left. They break the press that time, keeping the hammer on early here in Fairfield. And, you know, when you're playing a conference opponent, that's what you want to do. Kind of just want to stick it to him. Bolts had the shot go up and good, but we're going to get a foul. I think it's on Colton Land. It's going to be his second. Yep. Either him or Lackey. Yep. It is Colton. Colton's going to get his second foul. Third team foul. Kolak will check back in. El Dorado's ball underneath the out of bounds. 
and the Mules are going to get another steal. That's the seventh turnover in the first quarter. Up quickly to Kolak. In the corner, Gifford open for three. Hits it. Holy cow. Four threes in the first quarter for Andrew Gifford. He's got 15. Could we see a career night for Andrew? 24 to 1. Now Graceffa, he'll try himself a three. That's going to be short. Rebound corralled by Partridge. Up to Ninnis. Now to Kayser. Down low to Bolds. He puts it up off the glass. No good. Partridge gets the rebound. Fights. Puts it up. Puts it in. Adam Partridge gets the first field goal for the Eagles with 1.10 to go here in the first quarter. What I, I said before the game, I thought this would be a 10-point game. It's well. a 21-point game right now. And Andrew Gifford is feeling it early. In the corner to Miguel, looking for the assist this time. No good. Ball tipped around. Going to be won by El Dorado. And that's going to be a foul on Gifford, I think. And the one thing that you don't want Gifford to do is get in foul trouble. Have to sit on the bench because he is hot right now. Yeah. He could shoot it from anywhere on this half of the court, and I'd have a pretty – I'd be all right with it. He's just that hot. Comes the inbound pass for El Dorado. They're looking for somebody, anybody. Nennis is going to get in way in the backport. Back to Graceffa. He hasn't been close on a shot yet. Kayser now in the corner to Nennis. He'll fire a three. That's no good. Long rebound corralled by El Dorado. Graceffa in the paint. His shot is up and no good. This time, rebound corralled by Gifford. He's doing everything this quarter. Up quickly to the big man, Lackey. Back to Gifford. Now to Lackey. He ball fakes, goes baseline. He'll just turn around and shoot the jumper. No good. Tipped out one by El Dorado. Thought about holding for a last second shot there is what I would have thought. And Graceff is going to get in the lane. Foul will be on the floor. Macklin Snyder will pick up his first. Mules have five fouls here in the first quarter. Yeah. the uh, Seems like there have been a lot of fouls called in the last few games that we've uh, covered. And not a whole lot has gone wrong for the Mules here, but if there's one thing that you'd like to see cleaned up a little bit, it's the foul trouble. Under 15 seconds to go. Now Graceffa will try himself another three. That one's in and out, no good. Rebound goes to El Dorado. That one's no good. They can't get anything to go. 5.6 seconds left to go. But El Dorado getting a lot of second chance opportunities. Yeah, they are. Mules aren't boxing out very well at all right now. And some of that, I'm sure, has to do with the size factor. Graceffa at the buzzer. Of course it doesn't go in. And oh, I don't the, know if that one's going to count. Yep. They did. They got it to count at the buzzer. Was that Ninnis? I don't know. No, I'm not sure. We will be right back with the second quarter action here in just a little bit. Farmers have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and ag in the classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator. When you deliver your grain, ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. Over 200,000 people across the South Central Illinois region were positively impacted by the We Choose Health grant. With increased access to healthy food, physical activity, and smoke-free environments, the Clay and Wayne County Health Departments are proud to be beneficiaries of this grant opportunity. As your local health departments, we are here to serve our communities and provide valuable public health information. Wayne County Health Department, www.wchdil.com. Clay County Health Department, www.healthdept.org. Welcome back here on Outlook TV. Our score, 24-5. to Fairfield with a 19-point lead after one quarter. Heck of a quarter there by Andrew Gifford. He had 15 points, including four threes. El Loretta couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. And they keep Still turning okay. the ball over. Kolak got the steal, and he missed the layup. Nice take there, but maybe got a little bit too ahead of himself. Mm -hmm. Tried to spin it in a little bit too much. Now it's El Loretta ball. They're looking for a... Some sort of good shot. Partridge with the baseline jumper. He puts it in. He's the only one doing any kind of off offense. That's Adam Partridge. He's got five. That's 24-7. Now Fairfield 
you know, you can't get complacent just because you got up 24 to 1 at one point. Right. You mentioned uh, the JV game, the first JV game that these two teams played down at El Dorado, where El Dorado had a 17 point lead and Fairfield came back to cut it to just one point. That can happen, and there's still three quarters of ball game left. It happened at Red Hill. Mules at had Red a Hill, fi me. 15 point lead. That was a varsity game. And they came back and lost that game by one. Mules run a, a high flex action here. Gifford, thoughts about the three, puts up the 18-footer, nothing but net, 17. Just give him the rock, yeah. let him score. They're not uh, they're not touching the rim. No. He's feeling it right now, 26-7. to 7. 6.40 to go now in the first half. Burnett back in the game, along with Graceffa. Graceffa gets in the paint, puts up a shot. That's no good. Rebound going to be corralled by Brant McGill. Gets it up to Gifford. He's going to go up and under, try to spin it up and in, no good. Burnett was there looking for the block. And you're going to get a bump on Troyer. Be his first round. Team six. El Dorado's going to be in the bonus. And that was Gifford's first missed shot. That wasn't a free throw, I do I believe. I think, yeah. Uh, you're going to have Connor Scott check in for Brant McGill. And I believe uh, Nennis checked back in. He got a last second shot there mm -hmm. at the end of the first quarter. They finally inbound it. Bolds, he's going to put an easy one up and in. Clay Bolds wasn't much of a factor in the first mule game, even though he stands at 6'7". And now they've switched to man-to-man -man defense. And here's going to leave Gifford open for three again. I mean, my goodness. He's got 20. 20 of the mules, 29 points here in the first half. And he is just in fuego. Uh, what is, is that his fifth three? Fifth three here in the first half. And Partridge is going to bull his way to the basket, put it up and in. Get a little bit of scoring going. Heck of a game for Andrew Gifford. 20 points in the first half. I don't think any Mules had 20 points in the first half this year. Now they get Ooh. to Nathaniel. He tried to. He was going to go down and try to throw it down, but got blocked a couple of times. Good pick and roll. Mm -hmm. That's a second foul on Clay Bolts. The fourth team, the fifth team foul. Missing one. So Lackey will shoot two now. Got a pretty wide open lane there. I like that he, he was going to try. Free throws up and good. Worst that's going to happen, ideally, is you're just going to get fouled. fouled yeah. So Beth, I'm all for it. Bethel comes back in. They're also going to bring in Ethan Partridge. Going to replace Clay Bolds. Ethan stands 6'4". He's a sophomore, so they don't lose a whole lot of size. He got major minutes in the JV game. Pretty impressive player down there. Lackey. Makes the second one. He's got eight. You know, Andrew has 20. Lackey has eight. That's a good first yeah. half. Usually you're happy if you're too big. And I think Andrew poked it out of bounds from Max Kayser. They get it to Bethel. And here come the Eagles. They get it to Partridge, and two pa Adam Partridge, and yeah, you're going to yeah. get a foul. I think that's going to be two on Lackey. Nope, they gave no. it to Kolak, I believe. It's his first. A lot of fouls here for the Mules. Seven already. 5.17 to go, 31 to 11. I'm not super worried about it. No, they're pretty spread out, too. I think that uh, Land's the only one who has multiple fouls. He's coming back in the ball game. He's going to replace Connor Scott, give him good minutes. Mm -hmm. And I, frankly, right now I'm hoping for another one of the lob plays. Only this time for Land. They guarded it well with Lackey. Let's give it another chance. I don't know if they suspect oh, they, it with uh, Land. Unless they switch to man. Up quickly to Troyer in the corner. He'll try himself another three. No good. Kolak gets the rebound. Oh, he my. He puts it up, and he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. It's going to be Adam Partridge's first. He, sw he swung hard for that block. <laughs> yes, he did. He plays hard. You know, he's he's kind of a bull in a china shop type player. <laughs> so Sky Kolak now at the free throw line. First shot. I think he rushed it a little yep. bit. He tends to rush it just a hair. And Mules are going to be in the bonus now as well for the remainder of the half. Five, Still five minutes to go. Yeah, been a long first half. And it's not even all the way over. 32-12 to 12 is the score. 
Here comes Kaiser, gets it to Bethel down low to Partridge. He puts it up and in, and he's fouled. Adam Partridge, he's got 10 points. That's the second foul on Kolak. So Eagles, you know, they're not giving up here. No. Nope. And Partridge, Adam Partridge, did he, did he start? When? Pardon? When? Uh, uh, tonight. Uh, tonight? Yes. Yes. Okay. Missed that free throw. He's now two of five for the, five for the free throw line. Excuse me. And it's 32-14. Lackey puts it up and in, and he's fouled. So Lackey is in double figures. And he gets Adam Partridge in foul trouble. Adam Partridge now with two, seventh team foul. Snyder will come in, bring out Kolak. Lackey has a chance on the end one. He's four for four from the free throw line tonight. He's got ten points. And they leave Partridge in. You mentioned it. Partridge is the only one really scoring for uh, El Dorado. Ten of their 14 points. Lackey has 11 now himself. Free throw rolls in. Fairfield pressing a bit here, trying to put this game away early. And you're going to get a foul on Troyer. His second, team ninth. It's going to send Burnett to the free throw line, I believe. McGill check in for Wyatt. So a lot of fouls here. Mm -hmm. And these are two rival schools. And you know, they played a whale of a football game this year. A 61 to 59 final score in overtime. And you wouldn't want to see this get chippy no. at all. Free throw is missed by Burnett, but he gets his own rebound. Now it's Bethel. He throws up a shot, no good. Rebound goes to Lackey. Gets it over to Gifford. I'd say Gifford hasn't shot in a while, but he's got five points in the quarter. I think they all came in the first 30 seconds. Top of the key to McGill. They get it down to Lackey. Nice pass. He's going to put it up, put it in. Daniel Lackey has 13. 37 to 14. Great first half so far by the Mules. Now Burnett gets it to a backdoor cutting. Partridge, he puts it up and in. That is... Ethan Partridge, I should say. Both Ethan and Adam are in the game. 37 to 16. Top of the key to Snyder. Now over to Gifford. Gifford gets the screen. He's going to go up to the rack, kicks it to Land. His shot's going to rattle home. Colton Land gets on the scoreboard. Great play there by Gifford. I bet he averages probably five assists a game or yep. so. He, whenever you drive in like that, you have the defense collapse on you, and if you're bigs like Land and Lackey can shoot from 15 feet, then you'll get a lot of assists off that. Bad shot there by Ethan Partridge. Back come the Mules. Over to McGill. Now to Snyder. Back to McGill. Now to Gifford. They get it down low to Lackey. Back to Gifford. He'll fire another three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> buries it. <laughs> Give him six threes in the first half, 23 points. Wow, what a half by Andrew Gifford, 42 to 16. I don't know how he's still – he's not guarded on a lot of these threes. No, I mean, the Mules are doing a great job of getting him open. He has 23 points. Yeah, 42-16, just a little bit under three minutes to go here, so still a lot of time. You know, there's been games Mules have struggled to put up 42. I don't think that's true, but, you know, it's been close. They had 48 in the game versus Carmine. That's the lowest scoring game they've had this year. Now it's the Lackey. He does an up and under. Another assist for Andrew Gifford. And it's the Andrew Gifford and Nathaniel Lackey yeah. show. Lackey has 15. And we're going to get a travel on Graceffa. Tenth turnover on El Dorado. This is just very, very impressive right now. Lackey is the second leading scorer on the Mules with 15. He's almost outscoring El Dorado himself. Yeah. But Gifford's night thus far has just been outstanding. To Gifford on the left wing. Gets the slip down to Nathaniel. And Nathaniel about loses the ball. Kicks it across to Snyder. Fairfield needs to space out a little bit. They're in man-to-man -man now. Gifford gets into the lane. He's going to pick up a foul, so he'll go to the free throw line. Didn't see who the foul was on. Bethel, that's his second. 
team eight. Clay Bolts will check in. They'll bring Kolak back in for the Mules. Bolts in for El Dorado. They take out Colton Land. There's two fouls. And Gifford can continue to have a good first half. He probably doesn't want this first half to end. I, I but he misses the free yeah. throw. He's one of two, one of three from the free throw line. Up quickly to Kayser. Now over to Graceffa. They look for Burnett. Mules are just in there, 2 3. They get it down low to Burnett. Lackey tries to get a steal, and he does. Another turnover for El Dorado. Gets to Gifford. Under two minutes to go, 44 to 16. Well, is this a lob play again? Yeah, it should be. And you're going to get a foul on Burnett as he boxed out Lackey. So again, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, they did foul, but they defended the lob well. And if there's one thing you don't want to give up right now if you're El Dorado, you're giving up so many threes to Gifford. Fairfield's hot right now. You don't want to give up a dunk because then this place is just going to go nuts. Well, the thing is, the thing hasn't got a dunk at home this year, by the way. And uh, Connor Scott will check in for Kolak. And that plays, you know, not just for dunks, but right. offensively. That's a good open mm -hmm. layup you can get. Lackey at the free throw line. Nothing but net. Give him 16. He's got one more coming. Stay tuned to halftime. We'll have halftime scores for you along with uh, some stats. Got a lot of stats to total up. Lackey makes them both. Has he missed a free throw yet? Has not. 7-7. Seven to seven. He's got 17. Story of the half would be Nathaniel Lackey. You know, Andrew Gifford didn't have six threes. I believe he's 6-6 <laughs> six six from downtown. Now it's Graceffa on the wing. Mules, I believe, are in a man-to-man -man with 90 seconds to go. Kick it to Bolds, and his jumper is good. Nice pass. Clay Bolds picks up his second field goal of the quarter. The Laredo scored 13 this quarter, but the Mules have scored 22. Gifford has a lane to the basket, kicks it out. Just short jumper for McGill, and he puts it up yep. and in. Working on a double-double. A lot of people getting involved for the Mules. I believe they've had six or seven scores here, and it's 48 to 18. They scored 48 in a whole game once this season against Carmine. Bulls will try again. That's no good. Rebound goes to McGill. Oh, he missed no. Connor Scott. Now they get it to Snyder in the corner. He ball fakes. Gets it down to Nathaniel. Now to Snyder. He'll set his feet. He'll fire a three. No good. Rebound corralled by Bulls. Scott fighting for it, but Bulls will retain. 48-18, to 18, a 30-point lead for Fairfield. Did not expect this against El Dorado, let me tell you. Especially after the first game. is close first game. And it, Fairfield almost gets another steal ball on the ground. And it's going to go. Get a timeout here, Fairfield. So they'll get a steal on that. And I don't know what they're going to call. Full timeout, so we'll be back right after these messages. Have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and ag in the classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator when you deliver your grain. Ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. And welcome back here. We'll be mule ball with 19.4 seconds left to go. I imagine they'll go for the last second shot here. Chance to score 50 in a first half. Who are you going to have to take that last shot? I, I would almost <laughs> have to go Andrew, but, you know, what else? <laughs> I mean, what a half. A little screen and roll, 10 seconds left. Gifford gives it to Lackey. He goes baseline. He gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line with 2.9 seconds left to go. Got to be happy with that, though. Yeah. Lackey's had a – now I'm broadcaster's curse, but Lackey's had a good night from the free throw line thus far. Chance for him to get to 19 points and for the Mules to get to 50. 
Lackey makes it first. He has 18. Those two combined have almost all the Mules points right now. Lackey makes them both. Give them 20. Back quickly comes Grisef at the buzzer. No good. So your score at halftime. Fairfield 50, El Dorado 18. We'll be back after these messages for halftime. Over 200,000 people across the South Central Illinois region were positively impacted by the We Choose Health grant. With increased access to healthy food, physical activity, and smoke-free environments, the Clay and Wayne County Health Departments are proud to be beneficiaries of this grant opportunity. As your local health departments, we are here to serve our communities and provide valuable public health information. Wayne County Health Department, www.wchdil.com. Clay County Health Department, www.healthdept.org. When it's time to replace the old car or truck sitting in the drive, give Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in downtown Fairfield a chance at your business. We can save you money. No high pressure tactics, no fast talking, just good old fashioned respect for the customer's needs and wants in a comfortable atmosphere. Look us up at LamontsOnline.com, then contact us at Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. You'll like the way we do business. Farmers have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and Ag in the Classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator when you deliver your grain. Ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. You got it? And welcome back to the Mule Barn halftime show tonight brought to you by Shreve Home Inspection. Buying a home, call Kevin Shreve to schedule a thorough home inspection prior to purchase 618-842-3004. Fairfield leads this game 50-18 to at the half, and Dan is tallying up stats. He's got a ways to go. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some area scores. Uh, a lot of these are at halftime. Cahokia 38, Mount Vernon 32, Anna Jonesboro 32, Carterville 26, Marshall 27, Newton 26, Benton 29, West Frankfort 28, Massac County 31, Harrisburg 19, Woodlawn 30, Sisney 18, and two scores after one quarter. Uh, Christopher has 13, and Gorville has 11, and Pinckneyville leads DuCoin 18 to 5 after one. And Dan has finished his stats, I believe, so now I'm going to give those two. Start off with El Dorado. They have 12 turnovers in the first half. And not a whole lot of scoring. Adam Ninnis has two points. Clay Bold Bolds has four. Ethan Partridge has two. And Adam Partridge has ten points for El Dorado. Really their only scoring option in that first half. And now over to Fairfield. Uh, 50 points once again. They have 50 points. Only three turnovers. Wyatt Troyer has three points. Colton Land has two. Brent McGill has two. Sky Kolak has one. Nathaniel Lackey has 18 points. And Andrew Gifford has 23. Gifford with six first-half three-pointers. No misses from behind the three-point line. One miss from the field on a layup opportunity. He's one of three from the free throw line. But he has two missed free throws. Yeah. So uh, something to improve on there for him. But he has a chance to get to 30 in this game, which yeah. you looked up for career high. He yeah, hasn't done that. Got a couple update scores. Halftime, Pinckneyville 26 to coin 18. And Woodlawn 49, Sisney 27 after three. So we'll take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back here in just a little bit with some more halftime action. Over 200,000 people across the South Central Illinois region were positively impacted by the We Choose Health grant. With increased access to healthy food, physical activity, and smoke-free environments, the Clay and Wayne County Health Departments are proud to be beneficiaries of this grant opportunity. 
As your local health departments, we are here to serve our communities and provide valuable public health information. Wayne County Health Department, www.wchdil.com. Clay County Health Department, www.healthdept. When it's time to replace the old car or truck sitting in the drive, give Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in downtown Fairfield a chance at your business. We can save you money. No high-pressure tactics, no fast talking, just good old-fashioned respect for the customer's needs and wants in a comfortable atmosphere. Look us up at LamonsOnline.com, then contact us at Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. You'll like the way we do business. Farmers have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and Ag in the Classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator when you deliver your grain. Ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. Welcome back to halftime here at Fairfield in the Mule Barn. Our score is 50 to 18. Fairfield in the lead over El Dorado. And, you know, that has to probably be the best half of ball I've ever seen Fairfield play here this year. I mean, they they got hot in the first quarter. You mentioned it. You wanted them to come out strong. Andrew Gifford certainly did that. And I kind of thought that after the first quarter, whenever he was just unconscious, that he'd tail off a little bit. He didn't. No, he, he hit six threes there in the first half. He probably didn't want that first half. He had to go into that locker room, get a little cold. Uh, you know, he'll probably come out here and have a couple heat checks, but, you know, he's got an opportunity for a career high. I don't know what the mule record is for threes in the game. Uh, this year, I know Scott Kolak, he hit eight in the game, so that would be the record for this year. I think uh, Andrew actually had himself a game from three. I think he hit six in another game. I think it was that Harrisburg game, actually. Oh, yeah. Now that I think of it. That at was the, a three-point fest. At the Carmine White County Tournament. Andrew, coming into this game, I believe he had something like 46 threes in the season, so he has over 50. So he averages around two or so a game. Uh, just incredible numbers from uh, Andrew. Trying to find what his most threes were in a game this year. He's well, hit threes a couple times, four at El Dorado. You've mentioned a few times to me off air that for – Andrew Gifford to get to 1,000 points for his career, he'd have to average somewhere around 19 points a game for the yeah. remainder of the season. Yes. This is a good start. Yeah, it's this is helping. This a good start to that. This, is, this game's definitely going to help. Uh, you know, he's had some several good scoring games this season. He's averaging uh, a little over 16 and a half a game. Had a great El Dorado tournament where he had 15, 29, 28, and 18. And those last two were on a bum ankle. And lately, it seems like every other game has been a 20-point game for him. And uh, then you just have Nathaniel, the ever-constant. He averages uh, about 20 and a half. Uh, you know, had his career high of 39 earlier this year. Maybe Andrew will challenge that. But the one, the one danger with this, I mean, we're talking about these guys, and they've certainly, they deserve everything that we're saying about them right now. But this is a 32-point game. Yeah. So at some point, the starters are going to be pulled unless El Dorado starts hitting their shots and Fairfield starts going cold. Then you're going to get some reserve players in there, much like what happened at Wayne City. The most points we've had in a half by a player this year was 26 by Nathaniel Lackey at the Carmel White County Tournament uh, when he had that big 39-point yeah. game, 26 points in the second half. But again, I, I, you know, those two guys right there, you know, they have 40, what, 43 of the 50 points pretty good I'll that's, take that's all you want out of your seniors uh, but you know hopefully some other players will step up here uh, that's what I'd like I'd like to see yep. uh, Sky get a little more involved see if we can't get Colton some uh, nice easy layups he had some and foul trouble there so he yeah, didn't play a lot foul trouble El Dorado just now coming out of the locker room I, I, I don't know what coach Josh Bradley would say is like look we're not done we're going to keep fighting yeah. you know you got to be realistic with uh, these kids you know they're this isn't a grade school team where, hey, you can come back for many. You know, this is high school basketball. It's the real deal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they're going to probably come out here and play hard. And hopefully uh, 
we don't get too chippy out yeah. there. Nothing too dirty will happen because when it's a 32-point game, that can tend to happen. Players get frustrated, and, uh, you know, if you're if you're having the 50-point game, if you're on the, the Fairfield side right now, mm -hmm. then you're just having fun out there. You know, you're probably – you're enjoying yourself because you're ahead by 32 points and yeah. everything that you touch turns to gold. And if you're on El Dorado, then sometimes that can come across as cocky. Yeah. And you, you'd hate to see that happen. You mentioned it. These schools are rivals, a uh, good football game. A lot of these basketball players played football, so they yep. undoubtedly remember that. And you'd like it to not get chippy, but you'd also like it to where both teams continue to give 100%. You don't want Fairfield to slow down or get complacent. And you know that El Dorado isn't going to do that. You know, one thing I do want to do, Jeff, is give props to the band tonight. They've Very done an outstanding job. The combined band efforts of uh, Center Street Grade School, New Hope Grade School, and the FCHS uh, varsity, varsity band, I guess it would be technically, high school band. Will be fair football to start the second half. Gifford will inbound it. Finally gets it in to Troyer. El Dorado will counter with their starters. Fairfield has their starters out there as well. In the corner to Kolak, he's going to drive baseline, almost loses it, and now gets it to Gifford at the red line to land in the corner all the way across to Kolak. He's just going to go down the lane, do a good move, put it up and in, and he's fouled. Good move there by Sky. Wow. You mentioned you'd like to see him get more aggressive, more into the offense. There you go. Who was your key player of the game tonight? It was uh, it was Wyatt Troyer. Wyatt Troyer. Hit that early three. Hit that early three and got the mules going. Mm -hmm. Third foul there on Adam Partridge. And Kolak makes the free throw. Give him four. 53 to 18. Get it out to Burnett. Mules in man to man, I do believe. Bulls underneath, guarded by Lackey. Hook shots up and no good. Rebound tipped around one by Lackey. Here comes Gifford down the court. Quickly to Troyer in the corner along two. Goes in. <laughs> He's got five. Up quickly to Graceffa. He's going to get in the lane. No good. Bolds gets the rebound, puts it up, and in. Clay Bolds has six. You know, being 6'7 never hurts. Nope. Can't teach size. Nope. Gifford thought about doing a little heat check there. Now Lackey top of the key. Guarded by Bolds. Or Now Gifford will get in the lane, throw up a shot off the high backboard. What is this? Goes in. <laughs> He's got 25. Here comes Burnett. He just gets down the lane, force the issue, and he is fouled. He'll collect his first bucket of the night, and he'll have a free throw coming up. That's going to be the third foul on Wyatt. First team foul this half for the Mules. Hopefully they can, well, both sides can cut down on the fouls this second half. Did they, did they get to the double bonus? Who? Either side in the first half. Uh, I don't believe. No, neither side got to the double bonus. Hope that happens again. Up quickly to Lackey. He puts it in. He's got 20. He's got 21 points. Excuse me. He had 19 at the half. I was wrong a little bit there. How else am I wrong in the scorebook? Now it's Graceffa. Just his second game back. Doesn't have a whole lot going for him this time. Now it's Partridge in the lane. Bulls to recover, put it up and in. Lackey was breaking away there. Yeah. Fairfield would have recovered that. He would have had a dunk. And we get a foul. Give that to Kolak? Yeah, they gave it to Sky Kolak. His third turnover for the Mules. Second team foul. Yeah, Lackey had 19 the first half. That's my mistake. He's got 21. 59 to 25, so Sub came in for El Dorado. Kayser came back in. I believe he replaced Bethel. Whoa. Yeah, I think you're going to get a charge. Good play there by Sky. I believe he picked up the fourth foul on Adam Partridge. Sky went... He went flying there. Yeah, Partridge lowered his <laughs> shoulder right in the sky. Like football out there. El Dorado has about 20 guys on the bench. I imagine we'll see another one coming in. I don't have a 33 in my program. They get it down low to Nathaniel. Kicks it out to Troyer. He'll try another three. No good. 
Rebound corralled underneath by Land. He's going to get fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Do you have a 33? No, I do not. They only have 12 players on their uh, on their program for El Dorado. I imagine some of those are the JV players. Free throw is missed by Colton. Got another one coming. Number 33 coming in the ball game. Listen for the announcer. Says who he is. I don't know. Yeah, don't have a 33. And Colton misses them both. 59 to 25. 34 point lead for Fairfield. Down low, this is number 33. Spins, puts it up. No good. Rebound goes to Nathaniel. Up to Gifford. Because a couple crossovers. Gets it up, slows things down. Gets a couple screens. About loses the ball. Having trouble dribbling there. <laughs> Probably gets it out of his hands. Down low to Nathaniel Kolak. And he's going to turn it over. Fifth turnover for the Mules. Back comes El Dorado. It's Kayser, and he's going to just lose it. It's tipped up one by Burnett. Mules defense will need to reset. Burnett gets the lane, forces the issue, and you're going to get a second foul on Andrew Gifford. Well, they're forcing the issue. Yeah, and still a lot of fouls called. Three apiece, so they're even, but a lot of stoppages in play. Free throw is no good. And evidently the fan section is filled to capacity. So we've got some kids sitting directly on the railing in front of us. See if we can get their attention. Second free throw for Burnett is no good as well. Rebound goes to Lackey. Up the court to a wide open Wyatt Troyer. He lays it. Oh, he's going to oh. miss the layup. I don't know what the foul is. See if I can get his attention. This guy's attention in front of us. <laughs> Who'd they call the foul on? I don't. I wasn't sure. Thought they gave it to Troy. They did. That's they his did. fourth. It's going to be his fourth. Wyatt's going to have to come out. Team fourth. <laughs> he missed the wide open bunny. Perfect quarterback pass from Lackey. That's just insult to injury. Refs are talking yeah. something over right now. 4.40 to go here in the third quarter. 59 oh. to 25. No, and we're they gonna get a technical foul on Max Kaiser. That's gonna be his second foul. And you're gonna send Gifford the foul line. We're gonna get a technical foul on the head coach for El Dorado. So Bradley's gonna have to sit on the bench the rest of the game. He can't get up. So Gifford's going to have four free throws coming up. Well, he's got two here. The game got a little chippy, evidently. And he misses again. He's missed three in a row. You know he's not happy about that. Anytime you have a better shooting percentage from behind the three-point line than you do at the free throw line. Minimum five attempts. Gets that one to go. Now he's got two more. He's got 26 in the ball game. <laughs> that one <laughs> rims out. He's having his worst free throw shooting <laughs> game of the year. Or probably his best three-point shooting game. There and he makes is. that one. He is three of seven. And it will be... It would have been El Dorado's ball. And... Then the two technical fouls, I think, make it mule ball. Troyer will sit down and Snyder will come in. So, yeah, it should be mule ball after the two technicals. And I didn't see. Who was it? Kayser that got the technical? Yeah, Kayser got the technical, yeah. Wonder what he did. Hey, probably said something he didn't yeah, need to. Those magic words. Now to Lackey, back to Gifford. Gets double teamed. Gets it knocked out of his hand. Stay with Fairfield. And this is just a blowout no one expected. Thought this would be a close game. They played Harrisburg to a 14-point ball game on just Tuesday. But they but came in here and just didn't quite have it. We mentioned it in the pregame. As and Lackey gets hit in the face. And they're going to have a foul. Going to be underneath the basket.
Bradley Bold's going to pick up a foul. Fairfield's in the bonus for the rest of the game. Yeah, 16 fouls now thanks to the, the two technicals. Yeah. They get it in the lackey. Bold's almost fouls him again. Now it's Gifford. Gets it over to Brant McGill who's in the ballgame. Now to Snyder. Handed off to Gifford. El Laredo playing with a bit more intensity on defense right now. More than we've seen the rest of the game. Lackey drives the baseline, goes up and under and puts it in. And we've talked so much about Gifford having such an excellent game, and he is. But Lackey's having a game that's – he has 23 points himself. I believe Lackey just tied David Bourne on the all-time scoring list at 1,433. Three-pointer up and way no good. And rebound's going to go to Max Kaiser. After Burnett airballed the three-pointer, Gifford and Kaiser went after it. Down to Clay Bolds, and I think you're going to get a foul on Kolak. I thought it was before the entry pass. Oops. Gifford's so third. Gifford's third. And a foul on Ninnis. That's his second. This is one of the most bizarre games that I've been to in terms of foul calls. And you're going to get a foul on Brant McGill. They're trying to take control of this. Brant McGill is going to pick up his first. And Team six. El Dorado is in the bonus for the remainder of the game as well. At the free throw line is Burnett. He is one for two. He's got three points. Makes that one. He's got another one coming. El Dorado fans are not happy about this performance right now. And Burnett makes that one. Up quickly to Snyder. Gets it to a long shot from Brant McGill. Rebound goes to Lackey. And Gifford got nailed in the face. And Kolak goes down and fouls. Gifford's hurt. I think he just ran his face into him. Yeah. So, foul's going to be on Kolak. He's going to have four. Going to take Andrew out. Dennis went down and tried to get the layup. And we're going to have a timeout. Fairfield full timeout. We'll be right back after this. Have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and ag in the classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator. When you deliver your grain, ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. Over 200,000 people across the South Central Illinois region were positively impacted by the We Choose Health grant. With increased access to healthy food, physical activity, and smoke-free environments, the Clay and Wayne County Health Departments are proud to be beneficiaries of this grant opportunity. As your local health departments, we are here to serve our communities and provide valuable public health information. Wayne County Health Department, www.wchdil.com. Clay County Health Department, www.healthdept.org. And yeah, welcome back. 63-27 to score an eventful third quarter. About the only thing that hasn't happened, I don't think that Gifford has uh, attempted a three-point shot. He may not want to ruin his percentage. Yeah. At the line is Adam Ninnis. He has another one coming. Makes the front end of one and one. And he makes them both. El Dorado, I believe, has outscored the Mules this quarter. No, they haven't. It's, tw it's uh, 11 to 13. Snyder handling point guard. He about travels. Gets it to Nathaniel. Back to Snyder. Three minutes to go here. 34-point game. To Nathaniel on the wing. Now he's going to drive baseline. Spin. Put it up. No good. Rebound's going to go to El Dorado. Up quickly to Kayser. 
And he's going to scoop in. No good. Rebound's going to be corralled by Brant McGill. Slow things down just a little bit. Next break, Connor Scott will check in. Gets it to Kolak on the wing. And you're going to get a foul, I think, on Bolds. It's going to be Bolds fourth, team eighth. And you'll send Kolak back to the line. Adam Partridge will check in. Connor Scott will check in for Kolak here after he shoots. Let's see if this guy slows down a little bit on these free throws, give himself a little bit of time to collect himself. Nope. It's in. That's what matters. It's slower than his first one, I'll tell you that. Yeah. His first one, I think he just got the ball and automatically flinged it up there. Looking good. Kolak makes both. He'll check you out. He'll bring in Connor Scott. Two thirty to go. Sixty-five to twenty-nine. <laughs> Connor he's got Scott. Student section. He's got his own personal student section. Down low to Ethan Partridge. Almost had Lackey fooled. Ball oh. on the ground. They get it to Burnett. And you're going to get a foul on Lackey. Good effort. Both sides of the ball there. El Dorado winds up with it. And Lackey, uh, not, not a big not fan of that. Uh, I mean, he fouled him, obviously. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the foul itself on Lackey. He's got two. Gifford will be coming back in. Good to see he's all right. Mm -hmm. Burnett now four for four in this quarter. He's got six points in the ballgame. Gifford will come back in for Wyatt Bora. And that one goes in as well, five for five for the senior. Back comes Snyder. Still running the point a little bit. Now they get it to Gifford. I think he just got, you know, he got some stars there. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if he uh, hit his nose somewhere and yeah. kind of made him. Down low to the big man, Nathaniel. Top of the key, Gifford. Thought about firing a three. Does a nice spin move. Almost loses the ball. And it is a turnover. El Dorado slows it down just a little bit. Mules just have six turnovers, and Gifford's going to Gifford. pick up his fourth. So Gifford slowed down scoring tremendously here. Now, especially since he has four fouls. I think he's only taken the one shot. I mean, outside of the four technical free throws, he had that circus layup, but I don't think he shot outside of that. Rebound by Connor Scott. Ethan Partridge missed the free throw. Out there for the Mules, you have Scott, McGill, Gifford, and Lackey. Mules haven't scored in a while. They kick it down to Connor Scott, lays it up and in. The senior gets on the board. 67 to 31. They get it over to Kayser on the wing. Look down low for Partridge, he just flings it up there and it doesn't go in. Snyder with the rebound, gives it to Gifford. A minute left to go in the quarter. Mules up. They get to Lackey. Ooh. It's going to be knocked out of bounds by El Dorado. Stay with Fairfield. Bohr is going to come in, I think, for Andrew. Yes. Don't think that Gifford wanted to come out. Yeah, well, he's got four. He's got 27 points, though. We'll see him in the fourth quarter, I imagine, a little bit. They inbound it to Lackey with a minute left. Thought about shooting. Now to Snyder. Now to Bora. He had a pretty good JV game. Back to Macklin. Over to Bohr in the corner. Almost a steal, and it is a steal. They're going to hit it off of Snyder's head. It's the seventh turnover. And it's a 36-point game. 40 seconds left to go here in the third. And you're going to get a foul on either Snyder or Lackey. Lackey's got three. And El Dorado's in the double bonus. Yeah. We're still in the third quarter, yeah. by the way. El Dorado is in the double bonus. Mules are in foul trouble. If this was a close game, you know, yeah. be some problems right now. But it isn't. 
Nennis missed his first free throw. 38.5 seconds left to go. Nennis has uh, four points in the ballgame. Another free throw coming up. Makes the next. And Kayser is going to get an easy steal. Throws it back to Burnett. He's going to lay it up, and he's fouled. Just a little bit of a careless inbounds pass there, and then you have a basically a fast break opportunity for El Dorado. McGill picks up his second foul. And Burnett now has 10 points. Six for six on free throws this quarter. Snyder down, and he double dribbled. And the Mules have well, kind of fallen apart here yeah. just recently. A little sloppy. I mean, they're still up 32 points. And that probably has something to do with it. But, you know, you still want to see execution done. Mm -hmm. Kaiser coming up. 20 seconds to go. Out to Ninnis. Down low to Partridge. He's just going to bully his way yeah. in on Lackey and lay it up and in. Where is he? There you go. He's got four. Mules will go for the last second shot here. Not much time left. Try to kick it to Connor Scott again. They're just going to turn it over. The heave wasn't close. Not a pretty quarter for Fairfield, but they're still up by 30, 67-37. We'll be right back after this. When it's time to replace the old car or truck sitting in the drive, give Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in downtown Fairfield a chance at your business. We can save you money. No high-pressure tactics, no fast talking, just good old-fashioned respect for the customer's needs and wants in a comfortable atmosphere. Look us up at LeMondsOnline.com, then contact us at Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. You'll like the way we do business. Farmers have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and ag in the classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator. When you deliver your grain, ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. Back to play, and Nathan Burnett just buoyed his way to another basket, just forcing the issue. Mules have their starters back in, 67 to 39. Get it to Lackey at the high post. He about loses it back to Gifford. Throws up a wild shot, no good. Ball on the foul was on the ground, 19 foul, so he'll still go to the free throw line since it's the uh, bonus. But Gifford hasn't really shot that well from the no. free throw line tonight, so might actually play a factor here. Gets that one to go, though, so he will get the second one. And that's the first time of the night he's made two in a row. See if he can make it three. He does. There it is. Career high, 29 points for Andrew Gifford. 69 to 39. Imagine we'll see some mule subs here tonight, including Dakota. Mules playing their 2-3. And Land gets the steal. He just lays it up and in. Good play there by Colton Land. Just forced the issue. And that is the 14th turnover. They've cut down the turnovers, mm -hmm. too. 71 to 39. To Kaiser, shoots the free throw line jumper, in and out, no good. Land with the rebound. Gives it over to Gifford. Graceffa will be checking back in. Kolek thought about shooting the three. Has he shot? Well, he's maybe shot one or two tonight. Uh, not in the second half, I don't think. They give it over to Gifford. Looks to get a screen from Lackey. He's going to force the issue. Kicks it over to Kolek. Now he'll shoot. And it won't rim in. Tip up. Rebound goes to Troyer. Out to Gifford. Guarded very closely there by Nennis. Top of the key. Gifford will fire another three. Oh! oh. First three missed, and you're going to get a foul on 
Land. It's going to be his third and double bonus time for Fairfield or for El Dorado. And that one was halfway down. Did everything yeah. but go in. <laughs> Did everything but go in. At the free throw line is Burnett, 6-6 six six this quarter, or this half. See what the senior does here. I believe he's their leading scorer this season. It was Graceffa until he got hurt. Graceffa will come back in. Uh, he hasn't done a whole bunch of anything tonight. He's not even appeared in my scorebook. No fouls either. No. Kind of surprised. He started, and that was it. 71-41. Up quickly to Gifford in the corner. They look for Lackey. They get it to him. Back to Andrew. Gets in the lane. Little floater. It's good. 30-point game for Andrew Gifford. Career high, 31. Uh, Gifford, Lackey and, Gifford and Lackey, they're just doing a back and forth like yeah. they did in the first half. Lackey and Gifford combined now for 54 points. Partridge out to Graceffa. Now on to Kayser, top of the key, Burnett. Again, just working out of this 2-3 zone. The biggest lead was like 34 or 35 points, I think. Yeah. That three is up and no good. Tipped out one by Graceffa. Be careful, Sky. Now Bulls will fire a jumper no good. Rebound goes to Gifford. He's got one on five. He's going to lay it up and in. Give him 33. May go for 40. I don't know how much longer yep. Coach Mack's going to keep him in. Depends on when the subs come. 75 to 41. And that, Ooh. They're going to call a foul on Lackey. He hasn't scored here in the fourth quarter. 5 17, 75 to 41. And Clay Bowles will go to the free throw line. He hasn't shot any free throws yet tonight. He's got two coming up here. And Colton Land is the only Mules starter that doesn't have four fouls. <laughs> wow. But they're still out there. A lot of fouls. This We saw a lot of fouls last night, yeah, too. Yeah, we did. Hopefully we don't see that tomorrow. That one was missed, and Troyer about gets sandwiched. Up quickly to Gifford, gets it across the timeline. Now over to Kolak, to Lackey. Out on the wing, gives it back to fellow senior Lackey. Now to Kolak, he's open for three, no good. Rebound's going to go out of bounds. Just hasn't found it from behind the three-point line. I think that uh, Andrew Gifford might have taken Sky Kolak's three-point shooting for the night. Connor Scott and Dakota Young check in. You got all four Mule seniors out there now. And they'll be in that 2 3 zone. You know, I expect the other Raider won't take it easy. I don't think Dakota wants them to. They go right to attacking them. Ball on the ground. It's going to go out of bounds. Stay That's with all the Raider. Yep. I think this is – is this the first time we've seen all four seniors out there? I believe Burfield? it happened at Wayne City as well. They inbound it way in the backcourt. Bernetta will get that. El Dorado hasn't scored in a while. It's good to have all four seniors. Mm -hmm. Kayser will try himself a three. It's no good. Rebound goes to Connor Scott. Up to Gifford. Mules will slow it down just a little bit. Gifford gets to Nathaniel in the lane. He puts it up, puts it in. He has 25. I tell you, Dakota's just running better than he every single game. He's, he looks so much better out there running. You know, he plans on playing baseball here in a little bit, and Connor Scott just took it away from Adam Partridge. But they're going to call a foul on Connor. It's going to be his first, believe it or not. <laughs> Got to get him up to four as well. Should mention that Connor Scott was a Southern Illinois Coaches Association All South football player. Really? Yeah. The senior this year had a lot of tackles for loss. Partridge gets his first points in the second period. Gifford's coming out. Gifford's coming out. Caleb Smothers checking in. Heck of a game for Andrew Gifford. Career high, 33. I think we had it at six of seven from three. Yes. Second free throw rattles in as well. And Jaden Lewis will check in. Nathaniel Lackey will sit down. I can catch up on my scorebook, I guess. Jaden Lewis, the freshman in there. He 
is to Dakota Young on the outside. Now to Connor Scott, top of the key, back to Dakota. They're almost daring him <laughs> to fire a three. He'll fire the long two. Up and no good. Rebound goes to Bolts. Back comes Graceffa. Now to Kaiser. He's going to get fouled, I think, by Jaden Lewis. Yep, Jaden yep. picks up his first. And I'll tell you, we mentioned in the pregame that Lewis was having a really good game on defense in the JV game. I wish we could have, uh, wish we could have broadcast one of his dunks. He had a, or one of his dunks, one of his blocks. He had a come from behind, fast break block, a la LeBron James yeah. of six years ago. Yeah, he's he's not dunking yet. Maybe next no. year. I think I think he can dunk, but in an in-game situation, I, I don't think so. It's a little bit different scenario there. That is what I hear, at least. I don't have the ability myself. No, I've never even touched the rim. And El Dorado is subbing. Their JV team is out there now. El Dorado, uh, Fairfield now has Bora, Young, Smothers, Lewis, and Scott out there. They're going to run through their plays here. They get down to Dakota in the post, but he just loses the ball. He was had a good spin move there to get open, but couldn't quite handle it. Here comes number 31, who I don't know. Partridge will just pull up a three. That's no good. Jaden Lewis with the rebound. They get to Smothers. Three minutes to go here. A lot of time left in this ball game. 32-point lead for the Mules to Bora. Bora gets down in the lane, kicks it over to Smothers, who about loses the ball. I'm just doing up my totals, Jeff. That's Dakota at the free throw line. Tries to make a move. Does a little Ooh. spin. Puts it off the backboard. No good. Scott with the rebound. Lays up. No good. Dakota with the rebound. Puts it up. And they're going to get a foul. And Dakota will go to the free throw line. Got to get everybody in the scorebook. Sure. Especially if you're a senior. Connor Scott got some points earlier on here, so let's let's see if Dakota can get in there. I don't know if Dakota's attempted free throws this year. I don't know if he expected to be fouled no. this year. Nice strong take there to the basket, though. Yeah. No good, that free throw. <laughs> Completely silent in the gym while he's shooting yeah, it these, was by the way. Dead quiet. Dead quiet. Here comes the next for the senior from Fairfield. That one's good. Congratulations to Dakota, 78 mm -hmm. to 45. Dakota gets another point in the book. I think he has 11 on the year. Three up for Graceffa. Still can't buy a bucket. And Lewis is going to pick up a foul. A little too active on that. He's... He got really excited in the JV game after a few of those blocks. He's swatting hard now. He's not just wanting a block. He wants something emphatic. And we got number 41 here shooting free throws. Makes it. Don't have a name. Maybe if I had my El Dorado program, uh, my uh, El Dorado Holiday Tournament program. And they bring in number no. one. I ran out of scorebook room. You can only take 15 to regionals. Let everybody know. Stay tuned after the game. We'll talk with Coach Adam Buck. How go over scoring? Probably go over some uh, go over some uh, halftime scores as Jaden gets another rebound. Going to take it up himself. There he gives it to uh, Smothers. Okay, yeah, I think we're going to get a good kick. Mm -hmm. And Devin Butler's going to check in. Going to take out Kayla Smothers. All the mules have got in the ball game now. Connor Scott just loses the ball. It's going to go out of bounds. Turnover for Fairfield. 2 10 to go. Nope. That was off El Dorado. No. Oh. <laughs> They're going to say, okay, it's off El Dorado. Dakota Young didn't move. <laughs> just kept holding his hand out there for the ball until the ref changed his mind. Got that one in cleanly. To Bora. And they're just going to probably run some clock here. Down nice to Jaden wide open. He puts it up and in. Beautiful play. 
80 to 46. High scoring game of the year for the Mules has been 84. That was against Johnson City just about a week and a half ago. He also scored 82, I believe, against Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon Indiana. Indiana. Yep. That was number 33. Don't know who that is. In the corner to Butler is in the game. Devin Butler is sophomore. Connor Scott getting a lot of playing time. Gets it down to Dakota. Back out to Connor Scott. He's going to get in the lane. Put it up. No good. Rebound corralled by El Dorado. I believe that's Peyton Price. Number 34. Yes. To number 41, whoever he is. He probably stands about 6'2", 6'3". You know, this is a tall JV squad. To number one, he'll fire three. That hit nothing but air. tipped. They're going to say it was tipped. No. No. Hmm. Was not. I'm just. I'm just still in shock, really. Yeah, this uh, Lackey and Gifford had an excellent game. Another good inside pass to Lewis. Wide open bunny. Jane gets his uh, second bucket of the night. And going to get a travel on El Dorado. 48.2 seconds left to go. Kind of just need to hold the ball here. Yeah. 34-point lead, I would think. But at the same time. I mean, you want to I mean, get these guys yeah. to, yeah. These guys want to get want to get some points. They don't get to play big minutes too often. But Dakota is just holding it now. Yeah, I think you're just going to hold the last little bit here. Uh, what else could you do, you know? Uh, just a heck of an effort yep. here by the Mules tonight. They're going to win by over 30. I think our final score is going to be 82 to 48. And we'll have the totals done here for you after the game. And we'll also talk with Coach Book. We will also uh, maybe get some scores around the area if we have time. Your final score here is going to be Fairfield 82. El Dorado 48. Good win for the Mules. We'll be back after this with the post-game show. Have a gift for growing grain. Share your gift by donating bushels to support hospital advancements and ag in the classroom programming in our community. Complete a pledge card through the Golden Gate or Wayne City Elevator. When you deliver your grain, ask the elevator to transfer the grain to Fairfield Memorial Hospital Foundation or Wayne County Farm Bureau Foundation account. The value of the grain you donate is tax deductible, as are the share of expenses it took to grow the grain. You'll get a receipt in the mail recognizing your charitable gift. Thank you for supporting your community with your gift of grain. Over 200,000 people across the South Central Illinois region were positively impacted by the We Choose Health grant. With increased access to healthy food, physical activity, and smoke-free environments, the Clay and Wayne County Health Departments are proud to be beneficiaries of this grant opportunity. As your local health departments, we are here to serve our communities and provide valuable public health information. Wayne County Health Department, www.wchdil.com. Clay County Health Department, www.healthdept.org. When it's time to replace the old car or truck sitting in the drive, give Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in downtown Fairfield a chance at your business. We can save you money. No high pressure tactics, no fast talking, just good old fashioned respect for the customer's needs and wants in a comfortable atmosphere. Look us up at LamontsOnline.com, then contact us at Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. You'll like the way we do business. And welcome back, folks. Again, our final score here from the Mule Ball tonight is 82 to 48, a Mule win, big Mule win. Let's go ahead and give it, go ahead and give some awards. Offensive play of the game is presented by the Mont Chevrolet Chrysler Car Dealership Auto Repair in East Main and Fairfield for Express Lane Care, which is available six days a week. Call Jade 842-2147. Uh, easy goes to Andrew Gifford, uh, 33 points tonight, career high for him. Uh, hit six threes tonight. Well, six of seven, I believe, is what he was from downtown. A uh, heck of a game by the senior Andrew Gifford. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Lackey, Lackey also had, had an excellent game, but you, Gifford was just on fire in that first half. Defensive player of the game, 
Brought to you by Fairfield Moral Hospital, excellence you can trust. Check out their Facebook page for health and wellness tips. Plus links to their website and other trusted medical resources. I'm going to get out to Wyatt Troyer. Uh, played a heck of defense out there tonight. A little bit of foul trouble, uh, but got several steals. Mules had a tremendous defensive first quarter. Uh, but we're going to give the uh, defensive player of the game to Wyatt Troyer. You got some uh, got some final stats here. Sure. Uh, start off with El Dorado again. Believe that they finished with 15 turnovers. Mm -hmm. So they cut back tremendously in the second half, but still, I mean, big deficit. Adam Ninnis had five points. Clay Bolds had eight. Nathan Burnett led the way with 14 points. Adam Partridge had 12. Ethan Partridge had four. And, well, number 33 had two points. Number 41 had one point. Sorry we don't have the names not on the program for you. Uh, Fairfield Mules, their stats. Wyatt Troyer finished with five points. Colton Land had four. Andrew Gifford, we talked about him. He finished with 33. Brent McGill had two. Sky Kolek had six. Dakota Young hit one free throw. He finished with one point. Jaden Lewis had four. Connor Scott had two. And Nathaniel Lackey had 25 points. A little bit sloppy in the second half there for Fairfield. They finished with 11 turnovers. Mules have held their last one to six opponents under 54 points. That's pretty good average. Mm -hmm. And again, they win here big, 82 to 48. We're waiting on Coach Adam Book. Yep. Uh, he's just well, about up he here. Give you a couple of quick scores. Vianna defeated Hamilton County, 55 to 44. Carmine did defeat um, Johnston City earlier by, uh, I believe, over 20. Carterville over AJ, 71 to 60. Uh, Weber over Clay City, 47 41. Flora over Casey Westfield, 53 to 43. And that's what I'm going to do for now because Coach Book is up here with us. Coach Book, what a first quarter you guys had tonight. Anytime you can start out 21-1, I'll take that for sure. What was the key to that first quarter run you guys had? You just came out and blew the doors off this place. Well, yeah, we did. The The, the keys, the two keys, our defensive pressure really bothered them, and they were struggling to handle the ball. And then when Andrew's shooting like that, my goodness, we can pile up points in I, a hurry. I don't think I've ever seen him shoot that well. I think he was 6-7 on threes for the game. Uh, by just kind of eyeballing it up here. 33 points. Can you talk enough about your senior point guard? No, absolutely wonderful game from him. He had 33 points. He also had either seven or eight assists, and I think we only had him for one turnover. So that, I mean, that's one of the better games you're going to see out of anybody. That was that was outstanding. And, you know, and not say anything, you know, uh, Blackie showed up at 25, and, you know, no one's talking about him right, right. now. He, he had probably the quietest 19-point half that you're going to see that first <laughs> half. Um, that's not what people were talking about. And, and anytime you have 19 points and a half, normally that's going to be the story. But he was definitely getting his in the flow, and he just makes it look so easy. It's it's fun to watch those two when they're going. They're really hard to stop. You guys have held your last six opponents under 54 points. What about your defense is starting to come together here? Well, we've 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 committed to, to putting some pressure out of that zone. Um, we're trusting when, when we put pressure up on the guards and we know we've got Lackey, Colton, and Sky back behind, that's an athletic big – back line that can really cover up some of your mistakes. So we're, so we're allowing those guys to get out and really pressure, and teams teams are having trouble handling our pressure, and we're really getting good at making reads. Um, we're finding some things we can get away with, and we're just seems like we're getting better better every game. You guys have had two blowouts this week. You've had your last three games have been blowouts, in fact. I didn't know you guys were scoring 80 points a game now. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take it, that's for sure. A uh, big opponent tomorrow, big matchup with Casey Westfield, defeated by Flora tonight by 10, 53 to 43. Was that at Flora? Uh, I can't, I couldn't, couldn't tell you that. Okay. Um, but what can we expect out of the Casey Westfield Warriors tomorrow? Well, I know that their record may not indicate that they're a good team, but they are a very good team. They just got second in the um, LIC tournament last week. Um, at the beginning, they piled up some losses when they didn't have their big kid. Well, now they have their big kid. Carver? So, yes, Carver's his name. Um a lot of people are really high on their chances to go a long way in 1A. They're, they're, a, they're a very good school. Who's that floor? Okay, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough mass matchup. We're look, looking forward to it. Well, I hope you guys can go 3-0 this week. I also want to give your JV team props. Uh, you lost to this JV team earlier, probably one of the bigger JV teams you guys face. Yeah. And you guys battled and fought back and ended up winning here tonight. Really, really proud of our guys. And we were outsized all the way across, and, and we fought. And we finally hit some shots. The thing that we did all night long, we were 17 for 19 from the free throw line in the JV game, and that was the difference. Well, where were they in the varsity there, Jeff? 19 to 25. 25. What did they shoot? I bet they got half their points at the foul line. 18 to 24. Yeah. 18 to 20. Yeah, a lot of fouls yeah. in that game. Last two games we covered, we were down at Hampton County last night. 
They had five lady mules foul out down I there. I heard about that, yeah. And lo- you know, all your starters, I think, finished with four fouls tonight. But yeah. you guys persevered and had a really big win tonight. So we'll let you go, and we'll see you tomorrow at uh, Benton. All right, thank you. Thank you. That was uh, assistant mules coach Adam Book. And, again, our final score here from the Mule Barn, 82-48 to 48 with the uh, – going to Fairfield improving to 16-7 and seven, and I believe 7-0 and in conference. We'll be back in action tomorrow at Benton Shootout where Fairfield will take on KZ Westfield. So for my partner Jeff Vaughn, for everybody at Outlook TV, we want to thank all of our sponsors. Um, without you guys, this wouldn't really be possible and we can't thank you enough every single broadcast. So I am Dan Harris. You've been watching Wayne County Sports here on Outlook TV.